Hey guys, welcome to my bed that takes up my entire room. I've been really enjoying my channel lately. I've been really happy with being consistent. I've been loving the fashion videos, but I've noticed I haven't like sat and talked to the camera since I moved to LA. I came to LA at the end of May, not knowing how this attempt at moving to LA was gonna go. If you guys have been following the journey, you know it has been a journey between Airbnbs and roommates falling through and this time, Shit actually fell into place. When I wake up in the morning, it feels like I'm waking up in Pennsylvania. And I've never felt that in LA, ever. I've gotten many comments, actually, on my Starting Over at 28 series telling me, Nikki, when are you gonna realize LA isn't for you? And I'm not gonna sit here and gaslight you guys because if I was a viewer, I mean, I would be thinking the same thing. I've documented my 20s. Like, literally all of every single year of my 20s is on the internet. So you guys have seen me flip-flop. You guys have seen the internal turmoil I've dealt with for the last decade of LA, Pennsylvania, LA, Pennsylvania, hometown, LA, what do I do? Oh my God, bi coastal, stay in this relationship, leave this relationship. Do I still do Nikki and Gabby? Do I not? Do I? We finally made decisions. We finally followed through with them and I'm actually feeling stable. If you Google my name, if you Google Nikki DeMar leaving LA, this video will pop up. I have a viral video talking about why I left LA and I'm basically hating on it. And I thought it would be really fun to just like sit and watch it and react to it now living in LA. I wanna watch this video. I just had this idea and press record so you guys are gonna get my real reaction. I wanna see what I have to say to my past self. Was I right about shit? I have this love-hate relationship with LA. I'm very well aware that this can change because that's just how LA is. And anyone that lives in LA will agree with me. It's, it's annoying and and it's stressful and it's chaotic and it has Hollywood which is a chaotic industry but at the same time nowhere in the country is like this place but I feel like lately I've been really appreciating it for what it is I feel like here I was just so bitter about moving home from LA and I was ripping into it okay here we go why I left a beautiful city to move back home to Pennsylvania story time 899k almost a million people have watched this video and I posted it five years ago. I posted this May 30th, 2019. We're in 2024, what the f <sighs> Let's go. Oh my God, my Halloween sounds are still on. Oh my God. Okay, okay. are we ready? You know, when they say like too much of a good thing isn't a good thing, I feel like the consistent weather and the palm trees, like it low key was like beautiful but miserable. intro <laughs> quickly pulling up my notes in my phone so that way I can keep track and not ramble the whole video because I have points I have to make hey guys so right now I'm currently in my parents house in my childhood bedroom I let me give you guys some context on how fake the internet is I actually made this video because I was trying to convince myself of why I made the right decision I felt so uncomfortable living in LA I was so young I was in a relationship where like both of us didn't know how to take care of each other's emotional needs we were rotting we were depressed in the apartment I wasn't healed enough to like go out and make friends and, and I didn't know that I had no balance in my life I was just so unaware of why it was why my living out there was failing but all I knew was I wanted to instantly feel better so I moved home but I feel like after like a month at home I was like what's my purpose here in Pennsylvania I don't know I was 22 23 okay so everyone was moving to LA and when you're on YouTube for as long as me and Gabby have been on YouTube you question if you're making right decisions or if you're missing out on things from the outside looking in from Pennsylvania I would always see stories or snapchats of like all of our friends at events they would be at like red carpets at like makeup brands events and like it just looked legit and I was I would be sitting in Pennsylvania like am I just like missing something am I just like sitting here so now like looking back at this I literally just said I felt like I should move to LA because I was having FOMO I'm literally explaining the fear of missing out like now looking back like you know a lot of my friends live in New York City and it looks fun but it's like having a purpose or like there's a what you do for a living and then there's a why you do it and if you're not chasing your why then you're not gonna feel purposeful I'm watching this back and like I actually have goals which is why I'm happy to be in LA and watching this back I, I sound and look so purposeless like oh like you know all of our friends move there and they are doing 
doing all these events and their makeup and red carpets and all that stuff and that's why I moved there. The internet is such a lie. You can make anything look like a good time. I freaking made Pennsylvania look like a vibe. It's giving 23. You're not just a drive away from your parents. You're a six hour flight away from your parents and a six hour flight away from like everything you grew up knowing. When everyone started moving to LA, I would just be like, you know, I'm missing out, but it's not home, but it's not home. So then it's funny the way I used to like, like romanticize home. Like as you get older, you realize home is just like you. Home is wherever your life is. Obviously I get homesick. I've actually been struggling with being homesick because I love my family and I love my dogs and I miss my twin sister. Like being homesick is normal. You don't have to live in your hometown to be home. I don't know, I just feel like I've learned a lot about what creates a home. Like for example, my relationship is out here. I have a lot of like work and meeting. At the end of the day, as an almost 30 year old, my relationship and my job are like the most important things in my life right now and I'm living where that all is. This is equivalent to like when you go through your room late at night and you find an old journal that's like that's like talking about like how in love you were with someone and you look back and you're like what the f I started going through a lot of mental health problems. I get seasonal depression every year. Why am I giving the back now we're talking about seasonal depression? Also battling an eating disorder for the first time in my life. Yeah so um your early 20s are fucking hard. This is where I'm gonna get into like the problems we faced in LA. Like finally, after we're seven minutes and 47 seconds in and we're finally gonna get into the reasons why I left LA, which, which is literally the title of this video. I did not drive. I did not want to learn how to drive out there. I did not want to get in a car or behind a wheel out there. I drive every single day here in Pennsylvania. I love driving here. It's my sanity. I love listening to music. I still don't drive in LA. I haven't shipped my car and something in my gut is just like don't do it I mentioned in the video I witnessed two car accidents one was when I was in an uber and the other was when I was driving I still haven't forgotten about that I've, I've rented cars and I've driven out here But I don't want to ship my car and drive every day out here. I actually feel like I'm saving money I know I know I know some of you guys are gonna come for me But gas is so expensive out here and parking like I'm really trying to work on being on time And I feel like when I uber somewhere the odds are that I'll get there more on time than if I'm trying to look for parking. I never touched on parking in here, but it is really stressful because of how people drive. Something really sus out here. The driving's scary and I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I miss driving and I'm so excited to go home to Pennsylvania to drive, but it's not something that's gonna make me go home. But like back then at 23, like not knowing what to do with my life, I really needed that car and I needed to go get my coffee every day. And without that, I felt like I didn't have an everyday life. So that was a big point for me, but now it's like, I don't care. I'll walk or I'll Uber. It's not that big of a deal, but this was like my first point. So it was a big deal to me back then. That's so funny. Didn't also like relying on Ubers because one, I would always get car sick when other people drive me or I sit in the back of a car. Two, we are also trusting a stranger in LA, which isn't really the smartest thing to do. You're in a car with a stranger, not for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. You're in the car with a stranger for probably about an hour because- Okay. I was living in the wrong locations. When I first moved to LA, I was on the west side in Santa Monica, which everyone tells you don't do that because no one wants to go to the west side. The traffic to go to the west side is just astronomical. So I wasn't exaggerating. Y'all were coming for me for Airbnb hopping. I know it was expensive, but I also know how important location is in LA. If you don't live in the right part of town, you won't be inspired or excited about your everyday life. And your Ubers will be so long, they'll be so expensive, You'll deal with getting car sick and because of the hassle it takes to get around you just won't leave your house And then you'll get depressed like I've been here. I've done that. I know how this works I don't know. I'm really glad I took my time. Um, I'm just gonna drop this in this video This living situation that I've been living in my like tiny room is coming to an end that this wasn't a permanent situation But it was for the summer and um, I will be getting my own place soon I do think the purpose of this apartment was to just get me out here and feeling settled and at home out here and also showing me a part of LA that I really fuck with like I literally love this part of LA and it literally changed the game for me I started to really hate my everyday life and whenever I like fight with my significant other I think it's a really good thing to get in the car go your separate ways and cool off and we couldn't do that because he didn't have a car out there I didn't have a car and I didn't want to drive don't live with your significant other if you're not ready 
The second thing that was an issue was running errands. I feel like a part of your everyday life is running errands. You run out of things. You run out of toothpaste, toilet paper, food. Gotta go food shopping. Need clothes for an event. Need new makeup. Run out of your foundation. Everything was such a hassle. Say I wanted to go to Target and get a new candle because my candle just ran out. I would literally have to plan, like, pick that one errand and that would be my errand for the entire day because it was unrealistic to think I could go to multiple places. Location, like where you live in LA, that's why it's so important. That's why I wouldn't sign a lease, guys, because I remembered this experience. So I Airbnb'd all around different spots of LA till I found the one that was convenient. Back in 2019, I don't think Instacart was, was a thing. I think that got really popular after the pandemic. So now I have an Instacart membership. I still don't food shop. I hate food shopping. I'm one of those people. I do Instacart and I walk to run my errands or I Instacart. I paid for that membership. It's worth it to me. Look how important. This was a huge point of why I left LA. So I'm glad I discovered Instacart. It was unrealistic to think I could go to multiple places in one day. You can't because it takes like an hour to get to Target. So populated and packed, it takes an hour to get to your car that you parked four levels up in a parking garage at Target filming. Filming, filming, filming. Another point. Filming. What do I have to say about this? You would think moving to LA would help your channel. It hurt my channel. It hurt my channel with Gabby. It hurt my channel here because everything's a hassle in LA. You have this great idea and you can't execute it because you need a permit. In LA, a lot of people film in LA and everyone out there really understands film culture and they know I could get money to have people film here. It's more complicated to film out there, whereas here, I could just go to like a school and film there. I could go to a park and film there. I could go to a store and film there and nobody's hassling me to have a permit. That was the one. You can tell how old this video is because now social media and content creation is so normalized. Like you walk by anyone in LA and they're being filmed on their phone, on a camera. Like it's just so normal. But back then, yeah, people gave a shit. Like it was really hard to execute the like shopping mall videos or like the Nikki and Gabby style content. So I understand that's like a very valid point, but I feel like now I can literally film anywhere and it is what it is. Times have changed of the filming issues. The second one was that my content started to look like everybody else's. So you know how I was saying that like everyone up and moved to LA like in 2015, 2016? Nothing made me different anymore. I was another YouTuber living in LA in a nice modern apartment. I always had b-roll of palm trees. I was trying so hard to be different back then. Like y'all remember, I think this all stems from being a twin and fighting for individuality and feeling like you're part of a person since you were little. I think I was trying so hard to stand out on YouTube and online and I think the hair colors played into that and made me feel unique and special. I think I took social media so seriously that like even if I wasn't like fully happy, if I was different living where everyone else wasn't, then I was good. Like that's so toxic. And w when I was moving to LA this time around, I did have a few like people say like, if you wanna move somewhere, move to New York. That's where everybody's moving like for content. And I was just like, I know LA is overdone, but like this is like kind of like where my writing's gonna go places. And this is kind of the place where my industry is and what makes me happy. I'm a, the type of girl, as mentioned in, in this video, I get seasonal depression and I need the sun and I, I need to be writing and making music. That's all here. You know? No. I feel like I'm like a fall girl. Even though I get seasonal depression, I know I'm contradicting myself, I do appreciate seeing the change of seasons. It really makes me have that summer glow when it finally comes because I feel like we're kind of being punished during the year and then like when summer and spring comes, like you're rewarded and you feel happy. I'm an East Coast girl and I'll always be an East Coast girl, but like now I'm like, Nikki, you could just take trips. But at the same time, we hadn't conquered our fear of flying yet. Comment down below if I should react to the video of me driving across the country because I'm scared of flying. Because I have conquered my fear of flying. I think this wouldn't have been as stressful if I could just get on a plane by myself and go home when I wanted. But I truly did feel trapped in LA, missing out on like good parts of the year, like Halloween and fall, because my significant other didn't want to fly home with me. Nowadays, like yeah, my girlfriend likes to travel with me. She loves the East Coast and I'm so grateful for that. But there, there's still been times where I've been in PA and she's been in LA and I'm I'll still go back to PA and she'll maybe go visit her parents, but I feel like this was definitely an issue because I was in one or the other. I was stuck because I had so much anxiety. 
So when they say like too much of a good thing isn't a good thing, I feel like the consistent weather and the palm trees like it low-key was like beautiful but miserable because you don't appreciate the weather anymore. I'm spewing bars. Those are lyrics. Let's play that back. You know, when they say like too much of a good thing isn't a good thing. Miserable the palm trees, Nikki. Why is that so like, yeah, like it's accurate, but it's not at that extreme. My priorities back then were like my downtime, like driving around, scenery, convenience, running errands. Like now I'm just like, I want to hustle, do cool shit. I want to be proud of myself. Like my brain is not there. I felt like deep, deep down there was like this almost inner competition that like I wasn't trying to sign up for. I felt this energy that like I was never good enough and nothing was ever good enough that I never experienced here. Here I feel like I am everything and I'm fine the way I am. Play, I felt like I was constantly being looked up and down even when I was hanging out with friends. Here in Pennsylvania there obviously like isn't the beach or nice ass shops like Lush or Urban Outfitters or like all that stuff but like we make the best of what we have and like whenever like a new store is put in our area like we all get excited and grateful and I felt like in LA it's like you know too much of a good thing isn't a good thing like I feel like that's the motto of LA that's kind of true they're valid but it's like that's not gonna be a reason that deters me from where I'm gonna live and not me talking about lush and urban outfitters as nice stores I mean don't get me wrong I love those stores but like <laughs> why the <laughs> I'm screaming in 23 years old. Like, this is so fresh out of college and it's peak 2019. Oh my god. I feel like here I'm like more grounded and I get genuinely happier about things. With the people in the social life, I felt like even the people there like weren't grateful like for a lot of things and I, it started to rub off on me. Not it was just the people I was associating with. I really like the most part, like the kind of lifestyle I live, I hang out with people that are like kind of living the same type of lifestyle. Like dreaming big, trying to make it, not giving up, being optimistic. I hang out with a lot of creatives. A lot of my friends are actually photographers, stylists, creative directors, directors. Obviously I'm a YouTuber and I love editing and I love creative directing so maybe I naturally gravitate towards behind the scenes people because I also am one. Back then it was just a bunch of people that want to be in front of the camera hanging out. Too many egos in one room. It was a lot. I was very overstimulated. I didn't know a lot about myself here. Everybody, I want to put this out there, not everybody, but a lot of people lose sight of themselves and their morals. LA made me focused on the wrong things like red carpets, which I never actually gave a shit about until I moved there, or like events. It made me put that above like even video making and like this is why I'm even out there and it it was just kind of like this weird weird cycle of like trying to be happy trying like thinking if I did XYZ I'd be happy but I just wasn't I even interior designed my entire apartment with mr. Kate because that was my like attempt to feel like I was at home and want to stay there but that's a quick fix and it's material things and it's beautiful and she did a great job but that's not going to be the reason I stay in LA. I was so wise though like good for me for being so unapologetically myself like I'm putting it all out there ready for people to disagree with me and come for me and get mad at me but I don't disagree I think sometimes out here like there will be weeks where I do maybe too many events and book too many photo shoots and I feel too LA and I'm like wait I haven't like read a book I haven't listened to music or made a new Spotify playlist or I haven't watched some YouTube videos and sat in the bathtub and I there's times where I'm like shit I don't feel connected to my soul right now like I'm doing too much in front of the camera ego vibes and it, it makes me feel icky I didn't understand what balance meant back then I, I was very like black or white thinking very all or nothing I used to hate having my life on the internet, but I feel like it's actually really cool to see like the character development. <sighs> this is weird. I'm not happy there. So I like to look at life like a pie and in order for a human being to function and be happy, you need a balance of slices. And my I'm bringing a balance, good for me. Okay, so I understand, I think I had just learned about balance, but I didn't know how to implement it into my life counselor taught me this when I was in college you need a slice for relationship which is like your boyfriend if you have one or or girlfriend 
a slice for yourself and your alone time, a slice for your friends, a slice for your family, a slice for hobbies, and a slice for work. And if you're balanced and they're all equal size slices, you will be happy. I'm gonna be really honest. I just feel like back then it was so much easier to make money. All I had to do was upload one video a week with my twin sister and I was fucking good. I was so fucking good. I think sometimes I look back and I wish I was a little more grateful and understood the privilege. However, I think like I really was lacking like purpose. I wasn't working that much. I was kind of like to upload one video a week. Like I was off six days a week and one day I had to film with my sister. Now fast forward, I am busy working. I feel purposeful and I also am just, my mind is so busy. I'm lucky if I have time to be social. I'm lucky if I have time to chill and read a page in my book. I've been wanting, I keep on bringing up this book because I've been trying to read a book all week but I've had so much to do between music stuff coming and projects and merch and there's just so much stuff going on and meetings. I just feel like I have to definitely hustle more now than when I was that age. It was a luxury to have that much time off but I'm also watching this and I'm like, I feel like actually working hard is really good for my mental health. When it doesn't make sense and no one can see why or how like that's happiness because you don't have to explain it to anyone I'm so wise I love that quote I love that I said that if it doesn't make sense and you do it that means that's what you really want to do and that's what's gonna make you happy and honestly I feel like moving out here like I had so many people in the comments like thinking this is gonna go south because like obviously my track record I had so many people wishing bad upon my move okay had to pull back my content a little bit because of that. I know it doesn't make sense and people look at me like I'm crazy that I moved all the way out here to just like really like live my own life. You know, obviously I'm doing what I want to do and what I want to do doesn't make sense to other people and that's how I know it's what I want to do because I'm not following what other people want me to do or like what the viewer wants me to do, what they want to see me do next on my channel. I'm literally just doing what this version of me needs right now. All I can do is just constantly check in with myself and be honest with myself. Here we are, and I'm about to embark on another move, and I'm really excited about it, and I'm still debating if I'm going to be vlogging the move, because moving is so stressful. I am going into this super organized, and I'm really excited to have my own place. The lease is up at the end of July. And there's other things coming at the end of July. So be sure to subscribe, press the bell. You don't wanna miss these notifications cause I'm gonna be throwing some stuff at you guys. And follow me on Instagram and TikTok and even Snapchat. I always post on there. So I love you guys so much. Thanks for watching. Thanks for growing up with me and thanks for continuing to watch me. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.